I'm Senior Airman Ed Knekel with the U.S. Air Force Band of the West. I'm the pianist with the group and today in this lesson I'll be looking at the three steps that you should take in order to master Dan Cavanaugh's Jazz A2 No. 1. It's part of the 2021 TMEA All-State Jazz Ensemble Audition Package. It's a fun etude and we'll be looking at ways of interpreting the melody, looking at how you can voice your chords, and how you can approach the improvisation section. With that said, let's get started. The Jazz Etude Number no. 1, which is part of the 2020 TMEA All-State Jazz Ensemble Audition Package for Piano, was composed by Dan Cavanaugh, who is a professor of jazz and composition at the University of Texas Arlington. His big band compositions are pretty renowned. Let's listen to a brief excerpt of a chart of his that's performed by the Naval Big Band Next Wave called Split Rock. I find Dan Cavanaugh's music to be fresh and exciting. There are a lot of little curious moments that spark creativity for me when I listen to his music and you know the Jazz A2 number no. one is no exception. There are some fun twists and turns in this piece that make it interesting and a great addition to this particular All-State Jazz Ensemble audition package. So let's dive into the three ways that you can master Dan Cavanaugh's Jazz A2 number no. one. Now the first step in mastering this particular etude is going to be addressing the melody. The melody is probably the most important part of any piece of music. The melody inspires the improvisation, it gives character to the piece, and also it influences which harmonies and or voicings can be used as accompaniment. So first, I'll play the melody exactly as it is written. Now, I'll play the melody with some liberties taken to contribute a bit more interest with the rhythms and articulations. When I'm thinking of rhythm, in a rhythm section setting, that is, I am intently listening to the way that the drum set is establishing the eighth note pattern, and I work at fitting in my playing with the drum set's ride cymbal. Notice I changed up the beginning of measure 3 to a triplet, and measure 4 I changed to an 8th two sixteenth note rhythm, which is similar to the rhythm found in measure 6. These changes were made by inserting a chromatic passing tone into each instance. I'm able to make these changes because, one, this is a solo etude, so I don't have to worry about fitting with other instruments, and two, the nature of the jazz tradition implores that I add some of my own personality into the musical speaking of this melody. And isn't this why the interpretations of great jazz artists of the same melody are always fresh and inspiring? Because it is their way of speaking the melody. It's the equivalent of reciting a poem. Everyone will have their unique way of saying it. Now, one thing that is important when learning any new musical vocabulary, whether it is a whole composition or just a new jazz lick you transcribed, is to solidify what your fingering is going to be. This particular etude has some twists and turns that you will want to assign some fingerings to, to prevent your fingers from becoming wrapped up pretzels. I want to make sure that I start on my second finger. So my fingering will look like this in order to grab 
the whole second measure in one hand position. I'll start two, three, two, one, two, three, five, four, three, two, one, two, three. The same thing will go in the next line for measures 10 through 12. I want to look at grabbing the whole phrase in as smooth a way as I can. It'll go like this. Two, one, two, three, four, five, four, three, two, one, four, three, two, one, two, one, two, three, one, two, three, four, five, four, three, two. Let's move on to the melody that comes after the solo section. This part of the melody has a lot of exciting rhythmic and contour changes, so I don't see a need to change anything note-wise. However, I will make sure to apply some articulations for interest. So bottom line, know your melody. It's the first step in really getting to develop a personal connection to the tune that you're learning. Know your fingering and solidify a concept for how you want to play the melody that reflects your own personality without causing a break in the musical integrity of the piece. Okay, our second step is going to be looking at the chords of the Jazz Etude Number 1. I'll give you my choices for this etude. Primarily, the voicings are going to be rootless voicings that focus on providing the necessary tension to drive the progressions. Rootless voicings became associated with the pianist Bill Evans, who focused on harmonic extensions of a chord to complement the root movement that the bassist was already playing. The general rule for rootless voicings is that they stay above C3 in order to prevent sounding too muddy. You want to be able to play the chords fluently before adding the right hand. So let's try playing them in a steady comping pattern, except when we get to the notated block chord section at measure 14, we'll go ahead and play those written rhythms. At measure 29, I will switch to what are called shell voicings. Now these are in the style of Bud Powell, who played the root and seventh of the chord in his left hand while taking brilliant right hand bebop solos. I'm choosing these voicings because they add some weight to the end of this etude. They work well with the blues inflections of the melody at that point, and they don't clash with the register that the melody is in. The last two chord voicings can be tricky for smaller hands though, but you can always just roll the notes and capture them in the sustain pedal. I should also say that I strive to place the chords at moments that align with the melody and don't sound like they are on autopilot. For example, I play the A7 alt chord on the AND of beat 4 in measure 1, and the AND of beat 4 in measure 9, I play that G minor 7. Same with the pickup to measure 11, where I play the B flat 13 sharp 11 chord. Well, great. At this point, we've looked at ways of addressing the melody and getting connected to that, ways of 
making decisions on which chords you'll be playing. And the third step is going to be taking a look at how to prepare for the solo section. This etude gives a little less than eight measures to solo, so we want to be, to use a big word, parsimonious with what we play. That is, we really want the notes that we play in the solo to feel like they belong and contribute to the continuity of the etude as a whole. When I recorded the solo for this etude, I started with a reference to the opening figure of the etude, and then I went into an embellishment of measure two. And in general, I was reflecting on movements like those minor major seven arpeggios and stepwise motion that make up the etude and give it its unique personality. Take a look at some of the figures like in measure 3, 12, and 25 for some ideas that you can use to flesh out your own solo. Now when I'm going through the solo, I'm also trying to keep the contour diverse. Therefore, when I finish an ascending figure, I change direction and work my way through a descending passage. Now the etude melody moves pretty seamlessly, but I really liked those moments in the piece where he writes these tart leaps of a seventh, like in measure 8 and 25. So I incorporated some of those into the solo as well. So here is the solo with the transcription and with chordal accompaniment. <laughs> Okay, now I'll put all the parts together. Number one, we'll have the slightly altered melody, we'll have the chordal voicings, and three, we'll have the solo with an attention paid to continuity of ideas that you want to have related to the etude as a whole. Well, that's it. If you are able to get through those three steps, then you're on your way to creating an awesome package for your 2021 TMEA Allstate Jazz Ensemble Audition Package. If you liked this video, then go ahead and press the subscribe button. I'll also be putting out performances of the Jazz A2 number two and number three from the same TMEA Allstate Jazz Ensemble Audition Package for piano. Do you have any comments or questions on anything presented in the video? If you do, Please make sure that you include those down below and I'll make sure I, to respond to you. If you have any ideas about things you'd like me to make a video on in the future, you can include that too. Uh, the Band of the West has a Facebook, a Twitter, and an Instagram page. Check those out. You might really be inspired by some of the other content that the band is putting out. Well, until next time, I wish you all good health and good music.